Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 2, Episode 1 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. This is a really great place to start because I love food. For one, two is we've already talked about food, I mean space food, right? But most of that conversation was about when the food packets were already in space. John Glenn was the first American astronaut to eat food in space back in like 1962 aboard the Friendship 7. And back then people didn't really know how the whole food situation would actually work out because no one's ever eaten in zero gravity before. And really the big concern was like, how do you even get food down there? Like imagine eating food upside down. Right? Even the idea of that is kind of weird, but that's basically what astronauts have to do, and we've come up with some very creative solutions to get that done. These food packets look more like modified toothpaste containers, because at the time, all the food was liquid. Like, there really wasn't any solid food eaten in space for a while, actually. So what you would do is just create this sort of pouch, and it only has one opening, and you could only, like, squeeze that pouch, and, like, the food, like, liquid food, would be, like, you know, ingested into you. It would be like a straw, almost, but... It, the reason I was saying it's like a toothpaste-like container is because you couldn't put the food back in the packet. It was more just like this is what you had for like one meal and like they would ration it such like that. When it comes to early food preservation, I think about Christopher Columbus and like all those explorers and their like voyages that took months over the seas and they always stored their food using salt or brine. Now astronauts are also spending quite a bit of time in outer space but there's a bit of a different challenge, right? Because for astronauts, like, they have to also keep in track, like, it's, it's zero gravity for one, but they also need more calories, and they need better nutrition, the food has to be more compact, and they have to do it in a much safer way. Because, let's say, for example, you're eating, like, a sandwich in space, right? You don't want the crumbs from that sandwich to start drifting off Right, because like the those can get in, in some little like electrical uh, instruments, and that could mess up some calibration. You really, really gotta think super hard about what food is allowed in space because you don't want it to interfere with everything around you. Working with water is really, really interesting, uh, depending on what you're doing with it, because, I mean, for, for, if anything, this really just outlines how important water is to our survival. When water freezes, it expands, meaning it occupies more volume as ice than it does liquid water. But if you're converting liquid water into ice by just freezing it, the mass is not actually changing, but the volume is. And what that means is that ice has greater volume than liquid water, except the mass is the same. Density is mass per unit volume, which is why ice floats on liquid water, because it's less dense. This concept that solid water can float on liquid water is really weird, because besides just H2O, there's a uh, germanium, uh, arsenic, and I think bismuth. Those in their solid forms can actually float on those same elements in their liquid forms. But this is not very common, actually. Very few elements can do this. Ice evaporates into water vapor in a process called sublimation. And you would do this to uh, freeze dry any sort of food, like even today in the modern day. Like you have um, that sublimation, I think, I don't know if it goes through like how many processes. There's definitely a primary, secondary, and most often the tertiary, but it's the equivalent of like what we saw earlier in this anime where he was trying to dilute different chemicals. You want to repeat the distillation process as many times as you can to get the most pure form of what you want. So in this case, you have to freeze dry and then wait, freeze dry again, and you just keep on repeating that process so you have like really nothing left except for just like the bare like min minerals and grains and whatever else is in that food packet like you want all the water and all the air out of it then you nitrogen seal the pack and then you chip it off to space
<laughs> that was super cool and like I definitely agree it's gonna taste really really good especially when you're hungry food always tastes better when you're hungry and like one I'll, one thing I'll also add is like the hot water here is the key ingredient right because like that adds all the moisture and everything back that you sucked out of it now how is Senku gonna transport that right because like without the hot water you just have that cold ramen doesn't well I guess like need hot water that's an interesting way of putting it because any liquid water is going to be warmer than or higher temperature than ice so it's going to like you know defrost it a little bit the other thing boiling water is very essential for is to kill bacteria and viruses that may exist in your food and this is a this is a really big deal because in the stone world they don't really have a lot of medication right they have like that one sulfa drug but if people start getting sick, this is gonna be a big problem and way back in the day they got sick all the time. Your life expectancy was like nothing. And because of nutrition and all these things we've done to our food, we can live much longer. But knowing Senku, there's gotta be a way for him to transfer that boiling water because if you just add like water at like room temperature to that ramen, just let it sit there and kind of like, I don't know, heat up by itself or whatever they're, they're planning on doing with it, it's just not gonna taste as good and you're more susceptible to like bacteria and viruses building up while it's just sitting there on the side. Food poisoning is not a big issue for astronauts today because of how careful we are about what packaged food is sent into space. But I'd imagine that like it definitely must have been a concern. I mean, what if you get sick in outer space? As a side note, when you microwave anything, what you're actually doing is exciting the water molecules in the food that you're microwaving. That's why if you put something that's like dry and dehydrated in there, like, like some, some sort of a fruit, for example, like dehydrated banana. I, I don't even know why I thought about that, but if you put dehydrated banana into like a microwave and you heat it up, it's not really going to do much because there's not a lot of water in it. Thank That, that's pretty clever. Um, I, I really like that idea. That was that was really smart. The the thing about these balloons is that they're not filled with what balloons are you know, what we're used to, which is like helium, or if you're blowing up yourself, carbon dioxide. These balloons have hydrogen and oxygen. When you go buy a balloon from like a party store for someone's birthday or whatever like that, the reason it's floating is because there's mostly helium inside of that balloon. And if you blow up a balloon just like by yourself, what you're doing is exhaling carbon dioxide into it, which is why the balloons that you blow up with your breath, they just sink because carbon dioxide is more dense than the air around you versus helium, which is less dense than the air around you. Many people have not heard what it sounds like to blow up a balloon that has hydrogen in it. That's got a whole different, that explosion is way more violent. Like I'm gonna play a clip for you guys right here, but the reason for that is because hydrogen and oxygen are flammable. Helium and carbon dioxide are not. And you get a giant difference. Like check this out. Helium and hydrogen gas. Here we go with helium first. Let's try the hydrogen. Oh! I want to know if that idea that Senku had with the phone and the using the pop star's voice, that's actually going to work because it doesn't seem that ingenious. Like uh, maybe I'm not really getting it fully, but like I don't know if that's going to actually win you the war necessarily, right? That might distract enough people on the other guy's side so that you can like get a slight advantage on him but it's not like if like i don't know thousands of years pass and you just heard like ariana grande singing on a like you know right it's like okay that's cool but like but the, the, the what like how does that actually like help you in a war i didn't i don't really get that part thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that video and if you want to see more dr stone they are on the way if you want me to watch any other anime movie tv show let me know in the comments down below and i'll get to it as soon as i can thank you all so much for watching stay fresh and stay golden